Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Michel from uh, Facebook's Client Platform Engineering team. I go by Salim MA on the Federal Account System and Michel Salim on IRC. Uh, we have Davide here as well from our Operating System team. So in case you guys have questions about how we manage um, our uh, server fleet, or if you have any question about CentOS, uh, Davide will be here to answer those. Oh dear. Not sure what's going on the slides here. It was working half an hour ago. Anyway, so this talk we describe Facebook's federal client fleet and how it is well positioned um, at Facebook um, to be used for cross-function collaboration with external, external upstreams like Fedora or internal teams of Facebook that contribute to uh, Linux upstream. So the agenda, um, we'll start with uh, introduction, which we are in now. Um, I'll describe what I mean uh, when I say that uh, we treat Fedora and um, our server team as um, upstreams. Um, I'll go to a concrete example of how we are um, provision, uh, revamping the way we provision client systems to make it easier to contribute to upstream. And some of the changes in Fedora 33 that we are actually dog fooding right now on top of Fedora 32. And some upcoming projects that we want to work on with upstream. So um, I've been a Linux user since 1998. I wanted to start a few years earlier, but I didn't have my own computer. I've been contributing to Fedora since 2005, mostly doing package maintenance, but it's only in the past two years that I actually get to work, uh, get paid to actually work on Fedora at Facebook, which is really, really cool. It's uh, my second team here. Uh, on my first team at Facebook, I actually manage this. So yeah, scary thing, uh, mobile phones in data centers. Uh, these are used in our CI system, so we can test mobile apps and find bugs and performance regressions. They used to be a lot harder to maintain than right now because um, phones were not designed to be uh, fully automated. They assume there's a pep cap, and in this case, we don't. So we plug it into our automated uh, recovery system, but in case of phones, uh, a lot of the outages basically involve paging an operator to come and fix it. And now I manage, well, no, I don't manage my cats uh, because they cannot be managed. You might have seen, some of you might have seen Merlin, the fluffy one in social hours. He is banished right now because he likes uh, to roll around on my keyboard too much and that might not be good when I'm presenting. So yeah. Um, I'm in the client platform engineering team with uh, Jim, who is on the chat, and a bunch of other people, although um, only about three of us actually um, have expertise in Linux. As Jim said, most of our fleet um, is macOS and then Windows. I don't know, like, um, I might be a masochist, you know, like I pick mobile phone and then Linux, but hey, you know. Uh, someone has to do it, it's fun, and yeah. So another view of our desktop Linux fleet, we have on the magnitude of around a thousand Linux laptops and desktops. We switched over from um, a few years ago from mostly running Ubuntu to mostly running Fedora. And the reason for that is that we, uh, our production fleet in data center use um, CentOS and having um, picking a more similar distribution makes it easier to share uh, things like how we build internal packages and how um, how we actually uh, manage uh, the systems um, by reusing the same cookbooks. Uh, the fleet is mostly Lenovo, uh, ThinkPads on laptops and ThinkStations on desktops. 
We are also looking at uh, using CentOS uh, for desktop use, and there are some reasons for that. Some of our, some of the teams, especially the ones on desktops, find it. They 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 prefer the stability of CentOS, especially having a kernel that gets uh, backported changes instead of getting a new um, kernel every every two months or so, uh, like Fedora, especially if they have some performance sensitive uh, workloads. There's also the case that some of these teams need NVIDIA because they use CUDA and therefore they uh, they need to use the binary NVIDIA driver, which is, it works in Fedora, but it's not really supported. And if it breaks, NVIDIA will not do anything to fix it. So it might be uh, better to put them on CentOS anyway. So uh, what do I mean when I say like uh, we consider Fedora and the server fleet as upstreams? For Fedora, um, we, we basically mostly use uh, Fedora uh, as is, and we try not to customize too many things. That means when we have issues, we can we can uh, report them upstream, we can work uh, to actually fix it, and we can work on upcoming changes. We publish them using Kickstart. We'll go over this in more details in a bit. So the reason we particularly need to uh, use Kickstart is that uh, with uh, Linux right now, we, we have a requirement to have full disk encryption. And with Lux, you have to basically encrypt when you install. You cannot just uh, bolt on encryption um, on an existing hard disk. And we it's a super bad experience if uh, after someone went to the trouble of installing Linux and then we tell them, hey, sorry, your machine is out of compliance. You have to uh, reprovision. Uh, dog footing, yeah. Uh, Dog footing just means uh, internally using a change that's not actually uh, released outside yet. So the idea being that if you find bugs, you um, get broken by the by the bug instead of your uh, users. The production fleet. Production fleet is mostly CentOS 7 right now. Uh, it's migrating to CentOS 8 stream. The idea being that we uh, we can catch errors and contribute fixes before they make it to um, to the stable EL release. It's um, very slightly modified and most of the modifications are uh, shared upstream. Uh, they, are, they are publicly uh, in the RPM backports repo. Of the main interest is that the kernel is um, and systemd are much more up to date than on the stock CentOS 7. We, uh, Facebook has a kernel team that actively um, work upstream on new kernel features, and we um, we also contribute to systemd, and basically we track systemd uh, changes in the server fleet. I think they will be mostly on CentOS 8 stream uh, by Q1 next year. Uh, one thing that we want to borrow um, on the desktop fleet uh, that's already live on the server fleet is uh, they do a lot of really cool resource control uh, work on top of C groups too. Uh, so there's a link there to FB text too, which is the internal code name for it. It's going to be, it's in the process of being upstreamed uh, to systemd. So uh, soon you'll be, if you, if you've heard of systemd umd, uh, that's based on uh, Facebook umd that currently is live internally. And yeah, uh, the production fleet is managed using Chef. The same way we manage uh, the desktop fleet, we don't share uh, we don't share all the cookbooks, but we are trying to converge on using the same cookbooks everywhere. Yeah, Jim, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't advise like uh, eating dog food. <laughs> collaboration. So yeah, um, so there's a lot of avenue for collaboration on. Um, uh, with Fedora on testing upcoming changes and on basically uh, reporting and helping fix issues that we find um, for the for the upstream tooling that we use. With the production fleet, uh, some of the changes uh, like resource control 
go to the server fleet first, and it would be nice to basically validate them on the desktop fleet before they make it into, say, Fedora or into AppSync. Another uh, common feature is that CentOS, uh, like uh, Enterprise Linux, basically, um, they only have a subset of packages from Fedora, and those are the packages that uh, Red Hat is committed to maintaining. If you want to use anything else, uh, you need to use Apple, extra packages for Enterprise Linux. And we do use some Apple packages uh, on the server fleet and um, on the developer VMs. And the way Apple works is that whenever there's a new major EL release, Apple packages don't get automatically branched because there's no guarantee that uh, someone actually wants to use that package. So it's a um, it's a room for collaboration here in that we, um, since we actually need some of these packages for our workflows, we should probably at least co-maintain them to make sure that they are actually branched and maintained. Oh, going back to our collaboration, there's um, one other really cool thing that um, I discovered this morning in the CI talk. Apparently now it's possible to um, run your own CI server and contribute the results um, to the federal CI system, which would be really cool because we do have some non-standard hardware and if we can actually automatically report uh, regressions, that will help prevent uh, our users from being broken when it gets pushed. <clears throat> so some organization uh, changes we are thinking of doing. We already have some people um, at Facebook who actually are federal contributors. Uh, these are not really organized at the moment. So it'd be nice if there's um, on-call rotation that's in charge of uh, packaging. So we can say, hey, um, you know, this package, uh, we need this package in Apple, but it's not there right now. Could someone help uh, basically either get it co-maintained or get it branched and built by uh, by the maintainer? We, we need to involve our uh, users more in testing, especially the ones uh, that have non-standard hardware. For example, when the 5.7 kernel got out, our MSI users uh, got broken because their Wi-Fi um, PCI device ID was not uh, recognized anymore after um, after the driver got uh, refactored off stream. So that was fun. Um, if they had been participating in the test day, uh, they would have noticed and it would have been probably fix upstream or, you know, like Fedora wouldn't have released the 5.7 update. I think it's finally fixed in 5.7.9. And yeah, uh, the, there are some uh, changes that we are working on upstream with uh, other Facebook teams like uh, ButterFS. I'll try and go a bit quicker since otherwise we won't get to the demo. So um, one example um, of how we we are refactoring our, the way we work to uh, more closely uh, track upstream is provisioning. We traditionally we uh, provisioned with uh, Pixie uh, doing network booting. Uh, we later switched to iPixie because we find that uh, trying to configure all our offices to make sure that Pixie works in all of them is a pain, especially as we move uh, to IPv6 only offices. Uh, the downside of using uh, IPC is that we cannot use circuit build because the IPC uh, image is not signed. It also assumes that you have access to the internal network. It makes it hard to actually uh, test kickstart changes because um, the kickstart files live on the server. And whenever something breaks, it's really hard to tell us, hey, you know, like uh, it breaks, but we, we can give you logs, but we don't really, we cannot really share our kickstart because uh, it has internal stuff in it. And then uh, COVID hits and everyone's working from home and how do you provision at home, right? Um, so this is a system that we are moving to. It's modular. We use KS Flatten and KS Validate from PyKickstart so you can easily uh, add uh, snippets. So uh, if we want to report something, we can just take out the snippet that contains our internal config and everything is fine. We we then just inject a script that basically um, let, uh, let our users uh, run it and then it will prompt them to authenticate so they can join the internal network. 
we use logx to um, basically inject the our kickstart into the standard net install iso so um so we get a signed bootloader we can uh, keep circuit boot enabled it's brilliant and then we can just easily just boot uh, that um, iso on uh, vms if you want to do testing so demo time Let's hope this actually works. So I'm going to speed it up since provisioning actually takes about um, half an hour, sadly, on a gigabit network. So it's a normal kickstart. Um, it's, it's a bit slow, but um, most things are automated. Um, we, found, we found some bugs that I'll go, um, go over later. Oh dear, this is at 30 times normal speed. So I'll, I'll probably just uh, talk through this a bit. So as I mentioned, we have some users who actually require uh, using NVIDIA as part of their workflow. So um, the post install of this Kickstart is actually going to set up RPM Fusion. So by the time the user gets their machine and put it for the first time, NVIDIA is already enabled. And I'll try to pause when you get, ah, there we are. Oh, huh, Neil, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to mess around with uh, the with the repo section a bit too much. So basically right now, it's uh, this thing is going to auto detect and it will not actually enable RPM Fusion unless you actually have, unless you actually have, um, have an NVIDIA graphics card. Or like I, I make it to, so that if you're on a VM, it will also reinstall NVIDIA just so it's uh, easier to test changes. Speaking of changes, um, so the Kickstarter you just see, Actually installs uh, actually installs ButterFS instead of ext4 because we are dogfooding changes that are going to go into uh, Fedora 33. It uses Lux um, because we, as uh, Joseph was saying, we don't have uh, native ButterFS encryption yet. We uh, before all these changes, uh, we used to use the default workstation layout, so LVM, and then uh, using the root separate root and home partitions. We find we find the same issue that caused uh, Fedora to um, want to switch to using ButterFS anyway. In that uh, root tends to run out of space. So just before using ButterFS, we switched to saying like, "Screw it, let's uh, use a single unified root at home partition," which means you cannot reimage without backing up your home directory. So now we still use Lux until we have native encryption. So we are not really in a hurry to encourage people to like, hey, please wipe your ext4 installation and use this shiny ButterFS. You can if you want, but uh, in the near future, we'll probably ask them to reimage anyway if we can move away from using Lux. The reason we don't really like using Lux that much, I'll go over it in the next slide. We also use um, uh, Dogfood swap on Ziran, and that way we can get away from using a separate swap partition. We will probably add a uh, swap file if um, if we find a need for it. So some pain points. Uh, if you use the default ButterFS um, layout in Fedora and enable encryption, you end up with a separate uh, root and swap partitions. And they, they are going to use the same encryption key, but the problem is that if you ever change uh, one of the key, then um, it's, you now have to type in two passwords to actually unlock your disks. And it's basically between those two keys and the user account, it's um, now you suddenly have at least three passwords before any of the, taking into account any network password that you might have to use. Um, we, another pain point um, in automating it, this is that Anaconda doesn't have a way right now to actually say, hey, 
I want to install on the first non-removable drive and please don't touch anything else. I had to implement a slightly clowny workaround, which CAS Flatten doesn't like. So basically I had to CAS Flatten the kickstart and then inject this other script behind it. Um, there are some bugs that I'm going to report upstream. Like um, if you want to basically not hard code the Lux passphrase uh, that's initially used, it works in the text mode installer, but not in graphical. And also if you want to install the Wi-Fi, it works in graphical mode, but not over text mode. Um, I'll get to Stefano's question later on using software. So yeah, um, right now we use uh, swap on ZRAM um, in this uh, new Kickstart. Most of our laptops have uh, reasonably beefy hardware. So um, on, on our initial testing, we don't really need a swap file. We we are going to basically uh, manage it uh, using Chef if we find we need one. We are not going to dog food. The nano SD port editor change will just uh, get it when Fedora 33 comes. <laughs> Considering that the development uh, discussion is uh, way spicier than the discussion about adopting ButterFS, <laughs> we don't really want to get there. We can probably dog food uh, some other Fedora changes. Uh, so um, I'm not sure which of them might be relevant to our use case, but um, ping me if you if you want to get some, if you think your change should actually um, would make sense to get a uh, wider testing. Um, so yeah, uh, I mentioned earlier that we we are probably going to work with some other um, internal teams at Facebook to um, test systemd only uh, before it basically um, enters upstream. Uh, yeah, it, it's a really good time to start working on resource control on the desktop fleet. Fedora already ships uh, early umd, but uh, with uh, ButterFS becoming the default file system, it doesn't suffer from EXT4's priority inversion problem, meaning that we can actually uh, constrain um, some IO operation without it actually becoming a problem because uh, you have a low priority system, uh, task actually blocking a higher priority one. One really cool thing that um, we might want to um, test as well uh, really soon is the uh, FA policy D. It's, um, it's a daemon that someone at Red Hat is working on. I'm blanking on the name right now. We we deploy something similar on our macOS fleet called Santa. And the idea is that uh, with this, you, you can whitelist which application, sorry, you can basically uh, gate execution of binaries to only those that actually are are considered safe. So for instance, uh, uh, binaries that come from RPMs or binaries that are in the trust database. There are some features that I think it doesn't have right now. So we cannot say, hey, only trust certain RPM signing keys, but don't trust RPMs that the user installs themselves. And we currently don't have a way to, um, to manage this fleet wide yet, but it's coming. Um, another cool Red Hat project that we want to try is uh, Fleet Commander. So the, with this, the idea is that you can deploy configuration profiles instead of using a chef to actually lay them down. So it might make more sense for things that are a bit trickier to manage, like Network Manager. We One snag is that uh, the upstream implementation heavily ties it to either AD or free IPA, which we don't want to use because we um, we basically want, our, want it to be easy to manage our client fleet when they are roaming about not inside the internal network. So we already use and um, help co-maintain MicroMDN, which is a um, device management framework uh, normally used for macOS and iOS. So if we go with this, we might basically write a uh, backend uh, for the fleet from the client that make it talk to MicroMDN. So yeah, in conclusion, oof, we have two minutes. Um, the way we manage uh, our desktop Linux fleet, it increasingly involves uh, cross-function uh, collaboration with uh, other teams, whether at uh, Fedora or at Facebook. 
and we we hope to collaborate more with our community members or with other companies that have uh, similar needs as us in managing the fleet. So yeah, um, when you get to the slide, there are some uh, resources here that um, have links to. Uh, the first two are about um, talks that David gave about CentOS. Uh, the next one is a talk I gave last year at Flock. And then our uh, management cookbooks and the kickstarts I use for the demo. So yeah, um, sorry for only leaving one minute for questions. We can go over unless uh, there's some of the top people want to go to. And you can scan this QR code to get to the presentation or the slide is, the link to the slide is pinned on the session chat.